characters mm. you can now probably see why where rigiji is <laughs> rigiji is boiling somewhere it's yeah. being it's being roasted yes <laughs> because you're not saying that oh you're a bit under willy no i'm doing it under willy he's sitting right <laughs> right in sit house yeah. you know the problem we are having with the kenyan politicians mm. i not being one of them yeah. is a tumbo policy they are there to feed themselves mm. to acquire wealth and to acquire wealth for their families mm. and, and at least there i disagree with my senior brother uh, haman yeah. prof because even me i've suffered more than him yeah. Yeah, i've suffered more than the prof prof came into the scene the other day to a party leader what has happened to the leader of opposition why is he making this move what gives him the idea that he can do as he wishes? This is not his personal house, this is not so going. I think the president needs to stop being simplistic. Is there a vacuum post Raila? Play one clip where Ruto has spoken truthfully. A very good day to you and welcome to Philip Kisia Unscripted this particular Thursday. My name is Jadil Kabir. It's always an honor, it's always a joy, it's always a privilege to have you joining us here for our conversations. Conversations which we hope will help our political leaders in making better policy and political decisions. The conversation for today is about the danger of opposition working with government. The danger of Raila Laudinga closing up with President Ruto for AU chairmanship position. Opposition leaders are in the United States with President William Ruto for the state visit. Questions arising, why are they with the president? Should they play the role of oversight? That is my conversation with Philip Kisa. Thanks for making time one more time. How are you doing today? Well, Jed, I'm good. It's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, a pleasure to have me here today. I mean, uh, uh, you're looking good today. Okay. Uh, you must have received a bonus from Prof. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Prof says Raila has betrayed him because of this conversation, working with government. But before we get into it, uh, what are your highlights? What have you seen this week? Now, this has been a fairly interesting week, uh, especially with uh, the sea in sea out of the country. Mm. Uh, you know, it has been uh, a week full of drama with his deputy here, Rigade, trying to regain his position within um, uh, central province mm. so it has been a week full of drama and excitement mm. um, so but really what <laughs> caught my eye yeah. is the president's trip uh, to the united states of america you know most of the times people uh, say that uh, we don't see anything positive uh, in what the president is doing mm. at, at least for once i've seen something positive um, i've seen some what many have, positive what, things what have you seen? but let me say this yeah you know, I keep on saying that the president is a symbol of national unity. Mm. And how the president feels can transcend to how people feel. So for the first time, I think uh, the president showed a lot of love uh, to the first lady. You saw them holding hands, mm. uh, which was something extremely <laughs> positive, mm. especially if, given his background and where he comes from. Okay. I'm told that... Uh, uh, you don't show affection sometimes, and love. Sometimes and, you go show, too far. <laughs> you show affection and love. In, these are things that are public. Yeah. They're in the public domain, Jed. Yeah. And we must talk about them. Um, so that was positive because yeah. people are talking about it positively. Mm. It's positive. Okay. Because if you ever doubted that the president, uh, you know, uh, can demonstrate love, mm. you know, he has shown that uh, he can also be uh, somebody. <laughs> Let's move on to another highlight. <laughs> so, um, Jed. Yeah. Now, this uh, U.S. Uh, trip, of course, is uh, significant, um, very significant, uh, you know, um, uh, because, you know, being um, a head of state of an African country, being invited as a state guest mm. after almost 16 years is something to be proud of. So we are waiting to see the results that uh, will uh, emanate from uh, uh, this uh, state visit in, in the U.S. Mm. But really what has disturbed many people, mm. including myself, is the fact that the president and the government of Kenya Kwanzaa mm. decided to hire, they decided to hire um, a, 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 a jet from Abu Dhabi. Uh, this is a, a Boeing um, a 737-700 uh, 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 at a cost of uh, Kenya shillings 200 million. Yet, our, the pride of Africa, Kenya is uh, an airline that is recognized in Africa. 
you know, very efficient. Okay? At least for African standards, ex extremely efficient. We have a Dreamliner 787-8, a Dreamliner, that flies in daily to New York. So it's, it's a direct flight. This particular one had actually to stop in Spain to refuel because it has a range of 10 hours. Oh. We have a, an equipment that can fly directly into the U.S. So I don't know what informed that decision to, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to hire a jet when we could have used our own equipment. And you see, other than, there, there are so many um, benefits that would have uh, uh, derived from such a, uh, an action. You can imagine, other than saving costs, because flying people um, with our own equipment, the Dreamliner, you know, it can be reconfigured. Because a Dreamliner carries 234 passengers, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you can reconfigure so that you can accommodate the request from, uh, from the state. Oh, you can do that. You can, it can be re re reconfigured. Mm -hmm. um, you can imagine what it should have it done to our people. The staff morale. That the president has confidence in our equipment. The president has confidence in our staff. So it would have raised the morale from the cockpit, cockpit to the cabin. You can imagine what that would have done. Mm. Okay? Leave alone just saving the cost. The other thing is that uh, promoting uh, your own product, your own brand, and showing to the world that you have confidence. And if you're coming from America, this is the airline that you must use. Must be a preferred, uh, this is a preferred airline uh, of choice out of America into, into, into East Africa. Mm. Again, there are issues of how, you know, connectivity. We have called sharing arrangements with Delta. And Delta is one of the biggest airlines in, 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 um, in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he was a state guest. A state guest. So when you land uh, in foreign land being a, a state guest, there are certain protocols that are, are accorded to you. So the government of the United States takes over because you are a state guest, mm -hmm. providing you with all the logistical arrangements, including security and how your movements are. Mm -hmm. So um, to have seen the president and the Kenya Panther government are hiring a jet when there was a better alternative, mm -hmm. that was mind-boggling. Let me just hold you for that because a government spokesperson, Isaac Mora, comes and says it doesn't matter the amount of money being used. We're going to bring back investments that can even triple, quadruple the amount of money that has been used. He called us people because of asking this question. You see, uh, what do you think about his statement? I think uh, this is a, it com it's coming from a man who is not properly informed. You see, it doesn't mean if you are going to bring um, uh, deals, you're going to sign deals. And in, let's, let, in fact, let us wait for those deals to be signed. Mm -hmm. So far, I've not seen any deal being signed. Mm -hmm. Remember, Americans, the American government has no money to dish out to Africa. They only are only interested with their interests. Okay? They, they don't care. So the deals we are perpetually signing with are in private sector. Private sector, like uh, the companies we've signed, I don't want to mention their names, are profit-driven. Okay? They don't deal with another... Uh, you know, they're not interested uh, in a destination where they cannot reap a profit. Currently, if you look at our taxation regime, yeah, the way we... Uh, you know, the tax policies are not very stable... Uh, they keep on changing. There is no investor will come here. So we are still waiting for those billions of, 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 of dollars that will be signed. Mm. We shall see. I want to see one project that the American government will give this country. Forget about private sector. The deals are signing with private sector. That mm. one, those deals can even could have been done by ministers. We don't need a head of state. A head mm. of state goes to sign deals with another mm. uh, a, a government. Mm. So... Um, and then Maura forgets about promoting your own brand, being proud of your own brand, being proud of Kenya. Uh, I mean, those are things that you cannot um, quantify. Uh, the other thing, look at it this way, mm. Jed. You are a beggar. You're actually on a mission of begging. And you arrive in a jet that is costing the taxpayer 200 million. 
how do they think about you? How do we, would they look at, look, look at you? That is a man who is coming to beg. And is hiring a jail for 200 million. You think the American taxpayer will allow their money to go to waste in such a manner? So, um, now, then, in ending that trip, yeah. what again really disturbed me, because this is our president. He is the president, whether you like it or not. Yeah. He's our president, <laughs> and I love him, my friend. He's my president, Listen, too, yeah. this guy, guy called uh, Tyler Perry, yes. he does a tweet saying that, you know, I mean, I, uh, I got no time to see this guy, man, you know. Yeah. Maybe he got a call from uh, President Biden, but you know how Americans behave. So, you know, mm -hmm. listen, man, I've got better things to do. He's saying that he was informed about our president visiting the United States of America. And I'm sure there was two, three months notice. Mm -hmm. And he could not spare even 15 minutes to meet our president. Our president was being made by butlers and uh, mm -hmm. uh, such a, a low level people. <laughs> The other thing, was, Jed, the other thing, by Steve Harvey, he's a big the, other, the other is yeah. the equivalent of, 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 of Juan here. Uh, the other on. thing <laughs> is, <laughs> that was really disturbing and mind-boggling. Mm. The issue of, uh, you know, uh, failing to draw lines, party lines. I saw the ODM leadership from Nairobi accompanying their um, uh, governor uh, to Transoya, where I come from. Mm. Okay, which is a good thing because we need unity. That's your governor. Mm. You can be allowed to go, you're allowed to accompany him, you know, uh, especially on, on a matter that uh, um, uh, to do with his family because he was celebrating 30 years since the demise of his mother. Mm. So it was a great occasion. But where we draw lines mm. is where you have people going and endorsing a competitor because in ODM. As far as I know, and unless the top political leadership has changed mm. its course, we know that um, uh, so far there is Timothy Wanyonyi who has declared interest in that seat. Mm. He's ODM. He's been loyal to ODM. You remember in 2022 he was knocked out mm. because uh, uh, Jubilee's candidate had to be accommodated. Those wounds have not yet dried up. Hmm. Okay. Then, of course, uh, I've had also Babu, you know, uh, declaring, declaring interest. So within our own house, as ODM, we already have formidable candidates hmm. in the name of Tim Anyonyi and uh, maybe uh, uh, Babu. And you're introducing uh, an outsider and endorsing an outsider. Hmm. I think we must ask very tough questions here. Did these people, our MCAs from Nairobi, go to Transoia? With the blessings of the party leader, and even if they were not, they, they didn't have to seek permission. Mm. Were they who or under whose authority were they given to endorse a competitor? I think these are very hard questions that uh, need to be asked. Remember again, in 2022, mm. and they know Kenya is tribal, and when you are distributing positions at the top, you, you know you must you can't um, run away from the tribe, mm. other than the competencies and what have you. Um, you know, if you look at Nairobi politics, so far, somebody from Nyanza has held that office. We've also had somebody from Okambani holding that office. Mm. And in the last two, uh, six decades, mm. at the national level, there has been a ping pong mm. between Central and Drift. Central and Drift. It's a ping pong thing. I mean, people need to be sensitive. And I can tell you, if um, from where I stand, if the Nairobi politics are not proper, properly uh, uh, managed, mm. um, we shall face a disaster in 2027. We need to start preparing our house as ODM mm. so that we can face a competitor. Uh, uh, Governor Johnson Arthur Sakaja is a competitor from the other side. Mm. Unless he, I've, did, I've not heard him publicly declaring mm. that he has moved to ODM. So that was a bit disturbing. But, yeah. uh, you know, those are my highlights. I don't know about yours. Maybe you can tell me about yours. Let's just get into the conversation for today. You've brought it up well with ODM allied MCA supporting Johnson Sakaja, who is the governor. Conversation also is about Taylor Odinga working with President Ruto for his AU chairmanship position. And then there is minority leader Opio Anwandai in America with President Ruto together with other uh, leaders from the opposition. I'm looking at a statement from Azimio with Kenyans asking questions. Why are these people with Raila? Where is opposition working 
uh, with government. Here's a statement as Imiola Omoja on Kenya Coalition Party Leader Right Honorable Raila Odinga has noted and appreciates the concerns by members of the party of the presence of their leaders in the delegation by President Ruto in United States. Ms. Odinga wishes to clarify that as leaders accompanying the president were invited by the United States government and have his uh, and have his and the coalition's permission to join the president on this mission in line with the established uh, democratic traditions. He goes ahead and talks about uh, Obama came to Kenya with the opposition. But this is what my conversation is all about today. Where do we strike a balance when it comes to opposition working with government? First of all, Kisi, you look at these MPs, you look at these governors who are in the United States with President Ruto. What does this mean? What does it show about the effectiveness of oversight within Azimio? You see, uh, Jed, I think we sometimes also need to be a bit positive. Hmm. Okay? From the, con from the context that Kenya has one flag, Kenya is one nation, Kenya has one president, hmm. Kenya is one people. So when it comes to national interest, I think that's the time that we must come together. I have read and I know that the president's visit to the United States was a trade mission. He's going there for the purposes of what? Promoting Kenya. Mm. He is not going there to promote Kenya Kwanzaa government. He is there to promote the Kenya government to promote trade between Kenya and the United States of America. So to that extent, I think the trip is in order because we have gone there as a Kenyan delegation. Mm. If it had been branded, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, uh, team like Malala has gone to China, mm. that's a Kenya Kwanzaa whatever uh, outfit, I would have had a problem. Mm. Okay? So let us look at it positively. But I think for me, what is more critical is the outcome of that visit. What deals will they, at the end of the day, sign that would benefit people of the Republic of Kenya? If they come back empty-handed, then, of course, we shall scream. And we have every reason, uh, not only to make noise, but to hold both opposition and government to account. Hmm. Because they went there as a team. I'm sure before even the, they accepted the invitation, they must have been clear on what the mission, um, uh, you know, was um, uh, was all about. Hmm. But I, I, again, I think the public is, um, uh, you know, you should allow the public to ventilate and you know to speak about this matter. Hmm. Because when when you when when opposition and government is perceived to work closely you affect the public confidence. Then people start questioning whether you can be effective in terms of oversight in the same government. Mm. Because you'll be perceived to have gone into bed with a guy that you're supposed to oversight. You remember when um, um, the DPP attended the uh, Governor Sakaja's function in, uh, in, in Transoia? Mm. And people were wondering, uh, is this DPP? And where does he draw the line as an ordinary citizen? Yeah. And somebody who's coming from Western province and with somebody who's DPP. Supposing there's a situation where Governor Sakaja has to, the files are brought before him. Mm. How will he attend to those files? Do you think there's blurriness in uh, Kenyans' minds? Or do you feel like there's blurriness in the line between Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa with Raila now working with Ruto for AU? Do you think there's that blurriness right now? Of course, um, there is, because, um, you know, one thing that we cannot uh, discount is the fact that uh, Raila has a lot of influence, mm. not just within his strongholds, but Raila is, a, is an icon. Mm. So any action that Raila uh, takes, any action, any sort of action, mm. any move that he makes, mm. is born to face a lot of uh, uh, scrutiny. Okay? Mm. People would wonder, what has happened to our party leader? What has happened to the leader of opposition? Why is he making this move? Mm. Okay? Then, of course, the, the, there's the issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, dis, uh, uh, drawing lines are being very distinct between the opposition and government. Mm. So where do you draw this line? Mm. 
Mm. Where is the line being drawn? Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and I think you can, you can um, um, uh, you know, forgive the uh, public for scrutinizing this uh, type of arrangement. Mm. And that is why, why I'm saying that Raila must pay attention to such uh, cries, mm. um, you know, such concern coming out of the public. He cannot afford to ignore what people are speaking about would, this issue. Would you speak about the same as other people do, blaming Raila? Some say he's only focused on self-interest. You look at the Grand Coalition government, you go to the handshake, you look at what is happening now. Would we say, let's, let's, th this man is to be blamed for, this, for the way opposition behaves with government? Would you say that? You see, I think uh, even sometimes I think people are very unkind to Raila and the family. Raila has fought for this country, has fought for our, our democratic space. Mm. Raila has been in detention for over seven years. The family has suffered. Mama, I, there is no lady in this country, at least those in the political space, who has suffered like Mama Aida Odinga. Nothing. This lady has suffered. The mm. family has suffered. Mm. They have suffered injustice. They have been humiliated. Okay? And when Raila comes and gives you solutions, and when he presents himself as a viable candidate, mm. have we ever remembered the sacrifices that uh, Raila has made? Have we? We now only think of, about Raila when he wants also to take a break. Raila is also a human being, at least even to that extent. Please give Raila a break. We cannot keep on criticizing Raila and when he presents himself, we don't give the necessary support for him to occupy that particular space. Mm. So for me, I think um, uh, we are becoming uh, too over-reliant on Raila. And uh, it is time that also we start learning how to survive and how to, uh, to face the challenges that we are facing mm. without Raila's uh, uh, presence. Mm. Okay? Raila will not be there forever. Surely, all these years that Raila has provided leadership, we have not learned, we have not become strong enough, we have not been able to, um, uh, to have some unity of purpose. Mm. It is time that we stopped the over-dependency on Raila. We can't keep on crying about Raila. Let Raila take a break. Yeah. If the break is African Union chairmanship, so be it. For Haben Manyora, he says he feels like he has been betrayed by Raila Odinga says if it means working with Ruto for the sake of uh, African Union chairmanship, watch a guy, that's his words. Now, try to figure out what people feel when they see you with those people. Mm. What is AU? What does it mean to people? There are many people who feel if it means sacrificing to Ruto and kneeling before him. See, Kai, we have lost the presidents which matter to us. What is AU? Don't hold Raila the way I used to hold him. He's not where he used to be, to me. Eh. No, he has betrayed me. Would you read from the same script that Raila has somehow betrayed Kenyans by working with Ruto? How has Raila betrayed Kenyans? Kenyans are the ones who have betrayed uh, uh, Raila. Mm. Raila has been all along. Raila has, you know, suffered because of Kenyans. And, I, and at least there I disagree with my senior brother, uh, Haman, yeah. Prof. Because even me, I've suffered more than him. Yeah. Yeah, I've suffered more than the prof. Prof came into the scene the other day. Yeah. I was there in 2013. I should have been the governor of Nairobi. Mm. I was denied the ticket. You, I know you may not remember. You're mm. probably very young. I saw you uh, at JKL. I was, yeah, yeah, I was denied the ticket. I was there presenting myself for Westlands in 2022. Again, I was knocked off. Mm. So you see, I think we must learn to also sacrifice ourselves. Raila sacrificed enough. He has sacrificed his family. Mm. I, in my view, I think, let us allow Raila at least to, um, uh, to have some, some break. Mm. We can't keep on expecting Raila to fight for us. When, when is our time to fight for him, we take a back seat. Mm. So uh, between myself and Prof, I don't know who's been, <laughs> uh, who, who should be complaining. <laughs> I'm at, uh, actually, who should be complaining most? Mm. Because I've suffered. <laughs>
<laughs> then talk to me about the potential dangers of opposition working with government because some believe this might actually lead to a handshake. You look at what is happening with Rigadi, of course, we'll talk about that later. Some believe it's now Raila working with Ruto, potential handshake coming into play. What are the dangers of us going back to where we were with President Hulu? There are many dangers, uh, Jed. A lot of dangers. The first one is lack of boundaries. Because you can see um, my party leader, Raila, mm. uh, most of the times being unable to take the president head on. You know, uh, like, you know, matters to do taxation. Mm. By now, we should have serious mandamanos. Yeah. But <laughs> my party leader, I think, yeah. is a bit careful because, yeah. see... He needs support. He needs support when it comes to uh, AU. Uh. On the other hand, President Ruto, mm. uh, you know, I think he has told his uh, uh, bulldogs, mm. uh, for lack of a better word, eh? mm. uh, you know, that uh, please... Be careful with this old man. We need him. We need stability. We need peace. We need cohesion. Mm. And without this man, you know, we'll, they'll go back to the streets and I'll suffer. You know, I have suffered one half years. I've not uh, been sitting pretty in my office. Yeah. At least it has allowed me some breathing space. So please, be careful on your utterances. Okay? So right now, uh, President Ruto is willing even to sacrifice a few of his characters. Mm. You can now probably see why, where Rikiji is. <laughs> Rikiji is boiling somewhere. It's, yeah. being, it's being roasted. Yes. <laughs> and you're the one who's saying that, oh, you're a bit under willy. No, I'm a bit under willy. He's sitting right, <laughs> right in state house. So you're saying... Enjoying the parks. The other thing, of course, is um, oversighting. Mm. Big thing. When you have opposition and government mm. failing to draw lines, mm. how can you effectively oversight mm. the government? Do you see, um, uh, after coming from this trip, uh, you know, although, you know, I mean, I'd say earlier it's, it's okay uh, mm. so long as they keep to the objectives that I've sent them there. Mm. But you see, we don't know what will happen there. You know, um, things can happen. Yeah. Thing, many things can happen. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know how now Huandani will come back mm. and be able to effectively oversight his colleagues in parliament mm. because we don't know what will happen there. So I see a problem of, um, of oversighting. Mm. Uh, and of course, um, you know, the other thing is, um, the other two other things that um, I find that uh, could be affected to a great extent mm. is the issue of public engagements and the issue of public confidence. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Because the public was just wondering, no, wait a minute, we are suffering because of this regime. Overly corrupt regime. Mm. I don't even know how uh, President Biden has accommodated them. Uh, he must be having his own reasons. Yeah. Why is he accommodating this uh, regime that uh, is perceived to be uh, corrupt? And you know why? You know. So the the the, the, the public will start drawing back mm. because there is no time. The opposition and government have been together, other than when it comes to national interests. So, let, me, let, me, let me just ask you, what happens if the public draws back? When the public feels there's no representative, there's no one looking after them. What happens after that? Of course, apathy. In fact, if this uh, lovey dovey arrangement continues for too long, mm. I see the public pushing back. Mm. Okay? Mm. I see the turnover. Uh, the turnout for the uh, turnout for the next elections being extremely low mm. because they lose hope because the person is supposed to be defending them now will be perceived to be in in, in bed with um, the the ruling co uh, the coalition party mm. so uh, i mean the consequences can be there so then how do we strike the balance how do we strike the balance say you can work with government when it comes to this uh, and then you can play politics when it comes to this. How do you strike that balance when you're in the position? No, uh, Jed, it's very simple. Draw the line. What constitutes national interest? Of course, external aggression is a matter of national interest. Mm. If any threats externally, we must come together. Issues to do with the trade and promoting our country, that must bring us together. Mm. So anything that will benefit us as Kenyans, mm. anything that is a threat mm. to us as Kenyans, mm. that 
account and it amounts to a national uh, interest. Mm. But all these are the things that are local here. Mm. Anything here, yeah. upper, eh? there is no talking behind the tent. We must be in the public eye. So is there a way we can promote independence of the opposition? Because you know, as Gashagwa says, kila mtu anataka kuku upande wa serikali. Even when you're outside, you want to be upande wa serikali. And you're saying in the, in the United States, you don't know what can happen there. So how do you remain uh, independent while in opposition? I mean, just, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, the problem we are having with the Kenyan politicians, mm. I, not being one of them, yeah. is a tumbo policy. They are there to feed themselves, mm. to acquire wealth, and to acquire wealth for their families. Mm. They are not there for public good. Mm. If these people can just know mm. that they have been sent there by the, uh, the people to represent them and to represent their interests and draw a line, because from the packs they get, Mm. Those packs are, are, are good enough to take care of them. Mm. But when you want to go beyond the packs that they receive, then they get compromised. I think that's where the danger is. Mm. So it's about the person. It's about the person. It's about what they're getting from, uh, uh, you know, from this uh, lovey-dovey mm. arrangement that they have between, uh, mm. uh, you know, government and, uh, and opposition. Mm. But if you remain truthful to yourself, if you make a decision that you've been sent there to serve the people who sent you there. And there are few of them. There are few. I can tell you, Jed, this parliament, the 13th parliament, is the worst parliament. And 80% of the people in the 13th parliament are going home. 80, maybe 85% mm. are going home. There are few who will survive because they have been very steady fast. Okio Mtata being one of them. Mm. Uh, my in-law, um, my brother Jack Wanami mm. or Bumula being one of them. And there are a few others mm. who have shown that they, have not, they are not there for the purposes of their stomachs. Mm. You know, they are, they are avoiding this tumbo policy approach mm. to issues. All right, let's wrap this conversation at that particular point. A conversation about the danger of opposition working with government here with Philip Casey. He says, look, it's about the person can really not do anything about it. If people want to go to the other side, well, we'll get to a place where there's apathy. What a danger. Philip Casey, final word as we wrap up today. You see, um, um, to my president, to my good president, you are in the United States. Remember, we're praying for you. So that whatever you do is for the interest of the Republic of Kenya and its people. Mm. We know what the Democrats believe in. This thing called, this is something that he must avoid 100%. Uh. If they bring that document for him to sign, he must run away. We want to see him running away. You know, I have had these experiences when I was a chairman of uh, NCBDA. Yeah. Okay? And, you know, they brought me a document, not on this matter of... Uh, you know, uh, mm. uh, you know, but on interest, mm. a huge document like this one. And they said, sign this document. I said, I don't sign documents without reading. I must read documents. And I need two, three days to read this document and make notes. They went to my, Dr. Manoj and I said, you know, this young man of yours, that, that time I was still there, mm. in my mid-30s, said he has refused to sign. We are giving him money uh, on urban regeneration. When I read the document, Almost close to 80 90 percent of the money was going to consultancy. But do you know who was benefiting? Mm -hmm. Their people, not our people. Only 10 percent was being retained here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I said? Although you people brought this money that time, many years ago, almost 20 years ago, half million dollars for five years, every year, five half million dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't see the benefit of my people, and mm -hmm. therefore, I will not sign it. They went to Chandaria, but I said, I said, Manu, I'm not signing this document. So I'm hoping that um, William can do the same, same thing. And, uh, and you know, I think it's about optics. Mm. You know, the president has been seen there. It's good optics because he probably showed the photo of him with President Biden. You know, the other day my children were asking me, so was grandpa, uh, my late uh, uh, father-in-law, mm. they were asking me, 
So Grandpa was um, a friend to President uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. I said yes because I saw a photo. Mm. So I'm sure even his grandchildren were saying, oh, "Are you a friend of Biden?" Mm. Please, there are certain things that we shall not allow you to do. Mm. And I mentioned it. The last one mm. is about taxes. He seemed to have been so proud. Mm. Talk about uh, uh, you know taking Kenya through pain. Yeah. He seems to have been very happy that I will tax these people. See, you have a lipa tax. So, we are going to Kenya at payslip in major tax. He seems to be so happy. He seems, you know, you know, those are not things that you go and talk about in, 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 in Europe. You, mm. Because, you see, you must compare an apple to an apple, mm. not an orange. You show me, look at the infrastructure in the United States of America. Look at their uh, health facilities. Look at their roads. Look at everything. Look at security. Look at uh, education. It is not like here. Yeah, you know, there you are, uh, if you want to go to a, a public university or a state university, mm. You are the, 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 the government takes care of you. So their taxes are not looted mm. like we loot here. So please, Mr. President, we beg you. We are waiting for those deals. Mm. I'll be one of the people to receive at the airport dancing yeah. if you sign things that will benefit this country. But those are the things. Yeah. Stop. Please, and Mama, Samoy, let's pray for your son. Thank you for tuning into that conversation. Conversation. With regards to the United States visit of President William Ruto and how opposition is working with government. Share this video with as many people as possible, but my question for you today is, do you think we are safe with the opposition as of our oversight? As our oversight. But until we do talk again, have yourself a lovely rest of your day. What gives him the idea that he can do as he wishes? This is not his personal house, this is not so going. I think the president needs to stop being simplistic. Is there a vacuum post-railer? Play one clip where Ruto has spoken truthfully.